Good evening, everyone. This is 4 and 3 Sports Talk, and I'm your host, Rahim Eskalai. Sitting with me today is a man of many accomplishments. With 20 plus years of experience in the art of quarterback protection, he's also the offensive line coach at New England University and the owner of the prestigious Johnson Offensive Line Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Bobby Johnson, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Great. Thank you for having me. Yes, most definitely. Um, 20 years is a long time to dedicate to the sport. Where did your love for the game of football start? Um, so I was too big to play football growing up. I, uh, you know, I didn't play football to my freshman year of high school. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's so, it's so weird, you know, like I said, it's too big to play football, but back in the day, you know, there wasn't any AYF. It was just Pop Warner. Right. So, you know, in fifth grade, I was, I was like 5'11", 230 pounds. And my mom was like, you're not playing with the eighth graders. <laughs> so I was like, all right. So, uh. So I played football, baseball. I mean, I played baseball, soccer, and basketball growing up. And um, my uncle's best friend is Tim Griffiths, who's the coach at Leicester. He's been, you know, he's been at Leicester for a long, long time, won a bunch right. of Super Bowls. Um, and so I had that bug since I was a kid. Like, he was like, you know, hey, wait till high school, wait till high school, wait till high school. And I mean, the first time I got to, like, hit somebody for fun, um, you know, my freshman year, I was like, oh, this is awesome. And that's that's where I really fell in love with it, that, that first week of football in my freshman year of high school. <laughs> All right. And then it just it just took took off from there. And 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 dude, it's you've you you've made a heck of a life out of it. Let me let, let me tell you. 20 years doing 20 years doing anything's a long time, but just knowing the wear and tear that you guys take, you know, every play, especially especially like the center and the long snapper. Oh my god. It, you guys, you guys take the beating, right. and 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 I, my my hat, my hat goes off to you guys. Um, it's just every every time. So so yeah, what it's what was your favorite um spot to play along the offensive line? Uh, I played tackle my entire life. Um, in high school, I played right tackle, and then I went to prep school, and they get found they found out that um I could pass block really well, so I ended mm -hmm. up playing left tackle in prep school. Yeah. <laughs> um. And then I actually made my first college start at guard. I found out on a Wednesday of game week that they're like, hey, we're moving your left guard because uh, the team that we were playing, they had a really, they had a really good three tech. I was like, mm -hmm. all right. Um, so that was a trip. And uh, But I, yeah, I think I played like 38 games at tackle and like one or two games of guard. But I, I love playing tackle. Right, right, man. I went, I, I I, I always I always like to tease guards because when when you're standing over when you're standing um and the three and the the guy over there um to, to your opposite is at the three technique um I always like to 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 play with the guards and 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 tease them about um the the defensive ends doing stunts right um and and then doing that 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 loop back man I don't I don't know how I don't know how you guys contain them at that point and. And that's just just something something I, I wanted to I, I I wanted to tease you about a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> two two decades in the game working in the trenches, you you must have seen everything. In your opinion, what makes uh, a good offensive lineman? Um, there's really three things that I think make a really good offensive lineman a well-rounded offensive lineman. Mm -hmm. um, they got to be physical. You know, even if you, you know, you mess up every now and then on a blown assignment, if you're physical, you you still got a chance to be right, even when you're wrong, <laughs> if that makes, if that makes sense, you know, you know what I'm saying? Right. Um, next thing is cerebral. You know, you got to love the game, and you also got to understand the game on a, at a conceptual level at a, at a, you know, hey, you're not just, you don't know, just know what your job is. You know what your right guard's job is. You know what the left guard's job is. You know what the center's job is. You got to be to be a really good offensive lineman. You got to understand what all five guys are doing, and I think that's huge. And I think that's something I learned as a player my last couple of years playing. It really helped me. But yes, you got to be physical. You got to be cerebral. And then the last thing, um, I was lucky enough to pitch when I played baseball growing up, and I try to always compare pitching, being a pitcher, as being an offensive lineman. You gotta have a short. You gotta have short term memory, man. You know, you might have a great play, and then you might have a bad play. Either way, you know, hey, I just I just pancaked the guy. Hey, I gotta flip it, mm -hmm. reset next play. Hey, I just gave up a sack. 
oh crap, man, you know what do I do now? I got to reset it, flip it and get on to the next play. So I think that, you know, being level headed, you know, that's, that's huge being physical and being cerebral. Right. Right. Exactly. And that, and, and, and that, that mental, that, that mental aspect is huge because if you, if you don't, don't have that short term memory and you're still thinking about the sack on the next snap, uh, the, the, the D tackle is going to come through and sack the quarterback. And then, Oh, geez, I, I didn't give up two sacks now. <laughs> so <All right. laughs> what is the first thing a lineman can expect from you on day one when he steps onto the Nor'easters practice field? Uh, a lot of energy, a lot of love, um, a lot of jokes. <laughs> um, I I played for all different types of coaches. Um, right. And what I, what I tell the guys from day one, I'm never going to get after them for a physical mistake. If, you know, hey, they got beat by a really good player. They got beat by somebody stronger. Mm. That, that happens every now and then. The only time I'm really ever, ever going to get after someone is, you know, mental mistakes, you know, stepping the wrong way, you know, not, not ID in the mic, you know, something where it's mental and we go over it, you know, every day, so those, you know, those basic things, but I'm going to love, I'm going to love my guys up. Um, I tell them I love them all the time. I have a lot of energy. I have a lot of passion for offensive line and technique. Um, you know, some people, I know I, I rub some people the wrong way sometimes, um, but I'm a really big true believer in, you know, a combination of new school and old school techniques. I'm a big Charles Bentley guy. Um, and I'm a big oh. Crowther guy. I'm a big, yeah, big Crowther guy. So I want my guys to be safe using really safe and modern techniques while at the same time, you know, I want them to develop a love for the, the passion and uh, a love for the position of offensive line. I'm, you know, we don't get any credit. And I, I, I love that. I love not getting any credit because it just made me more hungry every mm -hmm. game. And I want my guys to feel that way too. The only guys that we need to care about, um, who, you know, who we think, what they think of us, is the guys in our room. You know, we're kind of, Duke Mayweather said two weeks ago, and it was a really, really good thing. I always kind of said it too. You know, an offensive line room, it's the team within the team. And any good team is going to have a really good offensive line. If you don't have a really good offensive line, your team's not going to be successful. Exactly. I um, I can't think of any any franchise or even even any um, college team or even down to the high school level that I've seen with um, play with the offensive line with holes. That's, that's, that's never good. And then that puts stress on the quarterback and, and the coordinator. And, and you know how, how it trickles down nice and, <laughs> nice and slow. Um, what does the typical game day look like for an offensive line coach such as yourself? Um, I'm, well, this year will be interesting. I'm working with a really good offense coordinator, Tim Vial, who's got some offensive line um, background. He coaches our quarterbacks here. So it'll be fun with him because I know he's got that background and I know if I'm talking to him, Trances, he knows, you know, I know he knows what he's talking about when I'm talking about. Um, but for me, um, I'm really lucky too to have an assistant here. So I'm going to be watching half the box and my assistant's watching the other half of the box. And I'm looking for what's my defensive end um, doing, what's my linebacker doing. And then I'm looking to see, hey, you know, I'll usually take the left, the, the far um, tackle, the far guard in the center. And my assistant will take the near guard and the near tackle. And what I want to do is we come off, you know, after a drive is over, you know, hey, how's how's so and so playing? How's so and so playing? All right, hey, you know, what happened on this play where you know we might have got blown up on an inside zone to their side? You know, what did you see there? Type of thing, and then we'll communicate that to the coordinator, saying, hey, you know, there was a, a Mike Blitz on the inside zone. Uh, you know, the right guard didn't pick it up. So right. on game day, that's what I'm looking for. You know, really, we taught them all week. We've taught them what they need to know. Yeah, mm -hmm. can, we make an a, can we make an adjustment here or there? But those adjustments have already been practiced too or installed. Game right. day is, is, is not easy, but it's a day where I'm there just to make sure the defense is giving us a look to what we practice. And yeah, if they're giving us something different, yeah, now we might have to teach a little something different at halftime or on the sideline. But I'm there really just trying to make sure that our guys are performing. And if they're not performing, hey, who do we have to put in? You know, what, what's the lineup change we have to make to make us function at an optimal level? All right, all right. It's like a, like a well-oiled machine. If something starts squeaking, let's get that WD-40. Let's, let's throw it on there and, uh, and, and, and keep pressing on. Um, what advice do you give young men that you coach when it comes to balancing their academics um, with football? Um, you know, I've been lucky to coach at the FCS level, Division two level, Division three level. And, you know, all of them, I, first thing I say 
if you're not eligible, you can't help us, right? You know, <laughs> right. If, you, if you don't have if you don't have the grades, you can't get on the field. Right. And 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 you know, realistically, hey, are any of the guys going to go to the league? You know, maybe at, when I was at Albany, there's a couple guys, maybe Division two, not really Division three. We had a really good player at RPI who's now, um, you know, crushing it in real life. But he had some looks as a, but he, he, never, he never, he didn't make it. And kids don't understand how hard it really is to make the NFL. Right. <laughs> you know, so yeah. I tell them it's academics, right? How do you balance your life? It's academics. You're a student athlete first. You know, student is first. I know it's a corny saying, but it's the truth. And then <laughs> right. I, I still want my guys to have fun. If it's just football, twenty four seven. And in school 24 seven, you're not going to have an enjoyable experience. You need to be able to go out with your friends. Maybe you'll go blow off some steam. You need to go out and just live your life. So that's why, that's why I love coaching division three. That's why I love being a division three player. Cause right. you have a life. You're not, you're not a piece of property that the school owns you. You have a life and you're able to do more than just play football in school. You can still experience other things at your school. Right. Now, um, aside from at the professional level, I, I'd like to know, um, do you, do, would you guys still have, um, I, I guess, organized team activities? Like um, uh, the guys will, will, will bond over a um, uh, ping pong game or, or the uh, guys will go to the, the basketball game or something like that? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, in a regular year when it's not this COVID craziness, um, you know, the up here, especially our guys are great. The offensive line, they're really funny. They'll go to like the men's and women's basketball games where they're chest painted, you know, shirtless. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was, um, coach, our head coach, um, we have really nice facilities up here, and the head coach will get food and the dining services for the team to watch um, the Super Bowl on, you know, you know, this beautiful, you know, couple hundred inch projector screen, or these two, oh, these two yeah. beautiful me meeting rooms. And uh, the co coach looked and will, you know, rent it out and have the guys watch the Super Bowl in there. There's a ton of stuff that we try to do to uh, stress family and create family. With me specifically as an offensive line coach, I mm -hmm. have team meals um, every every week during the season. Oh. You know, I want them, yeah, I want them to meet them, you know, meet my dog. I want them to meet my girlfriend. You know, I want them to know that you know it's more than just ball. Me, you know, any kid I've coached in ten years they know that they can call me, um, whether, you know, my first year coaching till now, you know, once you have played for me, even if it's a year, you know, I told everybody, you know, I got your back. If you ever need anything, just let me know. So I think that's huge. And yeah, like in division three, you know, spring ball, you're allowed 16 practices. And then, you know, that's really it. So when you, every time you do any type of bonding activity, you know, that's really on them, you know, out of season. Right, most definitely. And those 16 practices can and you know, they get done in like a, a blink of an eye so it's 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 good that that you you believe in that and 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 the camaraderie and 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 showing them some showing them something other than football man it's remarkable at what point in your football story did you want to get into coaching um it's a great question um I, I graduated from Worcester State. I was 25 years old. So I went to prep school and I registered uh, my first college. Awesome. So I was kind of, an old, kind of an old man. And my I played with Brian Cullen at Worcester State. Coach Cullen was there for 35 years. Um, he was the only coach in um, Worcester State history. Really, really good guy. Uh, I love the guy. Like and after I graduated, he asked myself and my other buddy, Adam Pelican, who is now the current Worcester State head coach, um, he said, you know, you guys should get into coaching. Like, you guys should try it. I think you'd be really good at it. And I was like, all right, you know, I'll do spring football. So I did spring football at Worcester State. And, you know, it was kind of weird coaching some of the kids that, you know, I would go out on a Saturday night with. <laughs> and, 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 I played, and, I, and I played with for, uh, you know, two, three years. Um, but I fell in love with it. Um, you know, trying to teach guys what, you know, worked for me. And then figure out what works for other guys. You know, not everybody was six. You know, I was a big dude. I was six, three, six, four. You know, mm -hmm. but what something that might work for me might not work for a guy who's five, ten, or five, nine. So <laughs> I, I just fell in love with um, technique and, and getting guys better. And then, um, you know, my coaching career just kind of took off. And then my passion for coaching just took off. Um, it was pretty awesome. You see an offensive lineman at, at five, five nine, five ten. 
I'll tell you what, uh, a couple of the best guys I ever coached are 5'10", 5, 5'11". 5, um, wow. You know, I mean, I mean, you look at it too, I know a lot of guys will get mad, but in Coastal Carolina, their center, I think this past year, is 5'10 on a good day. And he wow. was killing kids this past season. So, yeah, <laughs> obviously it's great to be big, and, you know, especially at, at the tackle position, I think it's really nice to be long. But I think yeah. if you are, you know, a center or a guard, as in, if, you, if you got that dog in you, you got that nastiness in you, mm-hmm. who cares how tall you are? <laughs> right, right, right. What's that? What's that? Hard over height, right? Right, right. <laughs> Do you aspire to take on other coaching roles in the future, like um, uh, coordinator or um, head coach? So I uh, was really privileged to work from one of my best friends this past fall in um, down in Maryland at a, at a prep, uh, private high school, and I was the offensive coordinator. Right. And I always wanted to be an offensive coordinator, and I was like, uh-huh. all right, I'll try it. Mm-hmm. And I just I love being an offensive line coach, and I I got to work with those guys the least out of anybody. I was really working with the quarterbacks and the wide receivers and the running backs. I really didn't get a chance to work with the offensive line like I wanted to, and no, I I right now in my life I really love being an offensive line coach, and you know I get to help out with the run game and and, and pass protections, but I love mm-hmm. just being able to work with my guys for forty five minutes on technique and assignment and things like that. So maybe someday. But I'm 34 years old, and I really like just being a, a college offensive line coach, getting to develop those guys. Right, most, most definitely. Um, to to add on what you said earlier, Maryland, Maryland late lately is um they're they're starting to heat up, and uh, to, like to me, it looks like it's becoming like a recruiting hotbed, dude. Uh, uh, some of the kids coming out of there are are, are pretty darn talented. And I'm, 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 I'm sure you enjoyed that. Yeah, no, the DMV, you know, um, you know, Maryland, Virginia, Delaware, the last probably 10, 15 years, um, you know, has, has started to become, you know, a huge hotbed. Um, I mean, when Rutgers was rocking and rolling, they were getting a lot of guys from there. When Maryland, when the University of Maryland was rocking and rolling, you know, they're getting a lot of guys to stay home. So, yeah, there's a lot of good football in there. I, I coach some really, really talented kids in the fall. Um, and, uh, yeah, that, the league that we were in was really, 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 really good football. Awesome. Can you tell us about the Johnson offensive line Academy? Um, what inspired you to create the organization and, and what were your goals for the athletes that train with you? Yeah. Um, so a couple of years ago, I think it was two or three years ago, the NCAA passed a, um, legislation saying that if you are a full-time coach, um, as long as you had permission from your athletic director, you could get essentially, you know, you'd be a club coach for your sport. Because before that, if you, you know, Division One, anything with scholarships, so Division One, Division Two, they they're still not allowed to do it. But as a Division Three pr- coach, you are allowed to, you know, essentially supplement income um, as a club coach or do private lessons like what I do. Um, nice. And to be completely honest. There were, there's not a lot of offensive line training in Massachusetts or in New England in general. There yeah. actually has, there's been a couple of people popping up lately, which is great. There's a couple of groups in Connecticut now. Um, there's one group up, 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 near, uh, up near me in uh, Maine, but I did it. I started to work with through USA football. I started to work with some kids at a younger age, through, you know, 14, 15 years old. And it was really cool to see these kids do techniques that I teach the college guys and be successful at it. And Parents come up to me like, hey, you know, Coach Johnson, can you work with my son one-on-one? I'm like, I can't. You know, it's against the rules. You know, and, and like for two or three years, if, you know, two or three years, people could ask me, I'm like, man, this would be a really good idea if I wasn't coaching college ball. Mm-hmm. And then they passed, they passed that legislation. I was like, oh, I got to do this. And, you know, it's a great way for me, you know, to just honestly develop high school offensive linemen with safe and modern techniques. Um, I get to I help the kids in recruiting, you know, if they want, but I'm never going to take, I'm never going to take credit for that. You know, that's all of them. You know, those kids have God given ability, you know, kids show up every Sunday for three years in a row, you know, it's them, it's not me. So that's why I did just to be somebody where I can develop offensive linemen in a, in a state where there really hasn't been a lot of development with that position. And there's a lot of talent there. Right. I, I, um, I, I was, I was, when I was, um, Doing a little research on you yesterday, I was thinking that I'm like, well, wow, it's. I wonder how how places like that aren't aren't um recruiting hotbeds with all all the uh the lumberjacks and all those 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 boys that live up there in the woods. There should be a, a, a um 
a, a huge, like a smorgasbord of offensive line right. and guys that 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 want to that want to run first and 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 hit guys, man. And that just it just it just made me laugh a little bit thinking about that. Um, what was the single most important lesson you teach every every lineman in this academy? Hmm. Good question. <laughs> um, I, no, I think the biggest thing is with them is you know coming and seeing a kid at 13, 14 years old. Now I have some guys that are graduating high school and they're going. One's going to Yale next year, and I have a kid right now who'll be a senior next year who's got an offer from I think every Ivy League school, maybe except one. And to see their transformation, the, the biggest thing from the get go has been you know you can do whatever you want. You just got to put the work in, mm-hmm. and you know to see guys like that physically and mentally change and. Just to see kids, you know, 13, 14, 15, 16 year old kids with a work ethic where they want to get up every Saturday morning, you know, every Sunday morning, or, you know, sometimes twice a week in the summer. And like, I, like I have a group, I have a group chat and I'll be like, hey, and we want to get working this week, you know, Tuesday, Thursday. And I'll get like eight or nine responses. Yes, coach, where, where, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. that's the biggest thing is, is nothing's going to be handed to you in life. And these kids have essentially, you know, instilled a work, work ethic in, their, in themselves, you know, I'm sure along with their parents and other coaches. Um, that's the biggest thing is just, Hey, you gotta get, you gotta earn everything you want in life. And to, again, to be um, a high school kid, an eighth grader who wants to go and, you know, offensive line ain't pretty. We're not, it's not like we're doing cool flash <laughs> drills. Where we're, ca- we're catching balls and stuff. We're, we're working on stance. We're working, we're working in painful, annoying positions. You know, we're doing things that the devil's in the details. That's the biggest thing I think right. I would, I would leave, you know, as an offensive lineman, the devil is in the details. If you don't want to get into the nitty gritty, you don't want to be able to take steps and, and have aiming points and, you know, Hey, when what, timing your punch and different techniques or different flexibility things, different, um, you know, try to change your body, try to lose weight, try to gain weight. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be a good, you're not going to be a good lineman. So I think just trying to instill a work ethic in these kids at a young age is probably the biggest thing I would, I would, I'm trying to teach them. Right. Still instilling that good work, work ethic. I, I personally have always, had respect for the lineman because I, I, I know like I, I you know, if you, you play around in practice, but, and, and, and one time our, our DN, I was, I was, I was playing tackle and our DN came in and, and, and he, he did some swim move on me, man. And, and like, it, it hit me on the right part of my, hit me on my chest and with pads and it just knocked the wind out of me. And, and I knew when I got home and like how, how my back felt and stuff, like, and that's when I realized that like the job you guys had and all oh, dude, if I'm, I'm feeling this now, I could imagine a guy who's in there, you know what I mean? For every possession of, of the four quarters, who's, who's getting destroyed every time. And sometimes by two and by, by two and three guys um, at a time too. That's um, just cause kudos and hats, hats to you guys, man. How did you navigate the consequences of the global pandemic and motivate your students to maintain their athleticism through so much uncertainty? Uh, it was really, been really crazy for me. So I think, so through the pandemic, I worked, I worked for three schools. So when the, when COVID shut everything down, I had just taken a job at the university of Albany and I was like, two, I was like two months into the job and all we could do with them was Zoom meetings and our strength coach is a really, really good, really, really good coach and a really good guy. Mm-hmm. He designed all of them, you know, a body weight workout. And it was just trying to keep them mentally engaged through Zoom and essentially having, having, we'd have upperclassmen teach the younger guys in our meetings. Um, and then when I got to Concordia in August, it was trying to get the guys to come out and we had socially distance, you know, conditioning, socially distance teaching. Um, you know, we were we were we were given hope we were going to have a season, and we ended up having a two game season, and then it got really bad in in, in, in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. But with that, but the same thing with them was, hey, let's so let's stay mentally engaged. Let's get you in some type of some type of physical condition where you can play a football game, right. because you know in the spring nobody was allowed to do anything. Mm-hmm. And then now at, at um, UNE, it's it's been the same thing. We were going to have a spring football game against uh, a school in Maine, and then we, you know, the we had a, some people made a decision to uh, not let us not let us be able to play due to some COVID concerns. 
and it was really, really tough on our guys. So nice. our head coach did a really good thing and gave the guys a couple of days off last week to, you know, emotionally start the healing process mm -hmm. because we had a, this is our senior class. There are eight kids that started the UNE, eight seniors left that started the UNE football program four years ago. And to have those guys not be able to play their last game after training for essentially all year right. is really, really tough, really, really tough. So this whole time, it's, it's, it's really, you know, mental health and keeping them mentally engaged. And then we've been really lucky to practice the socially distance again the last couple of days after being off for 10 days and uh, just trying to get the guys like my position, right, offensive line, hey, we're going to work technique. We're going to work steps. We're going to work angles and you know, we're, we're going to do it till you get bored and we're going to keep doing it. And mm -hmm. I think just be able to keep the guys mentally engaged um, through this whole thing is probably the, probably the biggest part, most crucial part. All right. Keeping, keeping, keeping everybody focused. Uh, the, 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 the big guys up front, that's, that's, that's where it starts. Um, which scenario do you find more ideal? Athletes who have experience playing different positions on the line or athletes who specialize um, playing one position? Do you mean like um, like if I'm recruiting a kid and he's playing, you know, hockey and football or do you mean a kid that can play a guard and tackle? Well, yeah, yeah. And, and I, I think, yeah, the this, this second one. Um, and I know, uh, forgive me, I, I know it's rare to find a guy who hasn't, who's not interchangeable, but just, just, I was just curious if, if, if that's something that you've ever, you've ever came across. No, I mean, um, so to kind of go both ways with it, one of the best kids I ever coached was all, all American tackle at, um, RPI. He was a hockey goalie in high school. He had really good hips, really good feet. He only played left tackle. I don't know if he could have played another position. And then to go, and then to, you know, to go opposite that, I've coached some guys where they literally could play all five spots in the line. And they knew all five spots in the line and they were good at any one of them. So, I mean, I think a coach's dream is if you have guys that could play all five positions and, and you can just plug and play guys or especially the division three level, you know, like I said, you might have a five, nine guy. That's a hell of a football player. <laughs> He's probably not going to be physically able to play tackle, um, right. you know, or you have a guy who's big and long and there's just no way that he can get moved in the guard. You know, I mean, there's there's this thing all the time, you know, especially on Twitter right now. There people are people are like, oh yeah, you can just move that really good left tackle into guard, and you know, when it's the NFL, it's a different world inside. Right, Physical, center and guard, you are you are <laughs> you got to be mean and nasty twenty four seven. All whereas the time. A <laughs> yeah, whereas a tackle, you can get away with you know being a little bit more finesse. You got a little yeah. bit more space to do stuff. So I, I think it's crazy when people just think that you can move an offensive tackle into guard in the NFL and expect them to be really good. <laughs> right, right. And then, and then, and then when you're, when you're a guy, um, just like you, you're saying, you're, you're used to the finesse and sometimes you tackles get away with, get away with a little bit of uh, holding your darn selves. You know what I mean? And um, <laughs> you're, you're not prepared for that inside and that, and that deep, that deep tackles feeling like Warren Sapp. You know, you're, I got a quarterback on the ground. All right. No, no doubt. <laughs> what can we expect this upcoming season from Coach Johnson and the Nor'easters? Um, the biggest thing that I wanted to bring when I came here it was just a it was a physical attitude. You know, I want I want our guys, I want the guys on the team to think of the offensive line as a physical group that's hardworking. Um, we try to stay out. We try to be the last people out um, on the practice field whenever we can. Yeah. We'll do some. We'll do some core work together every night after practice. I do it with him, and I'm always dying. <laughs> Whether it's planks or dead bugs, all this, it's miserable. But I need to get in <laughs> shape too, <laughs> so I do it with him. Um, but I want. We want to be physical. We want to be nasty, and we want to be sound. We want to be mentally tough, and we want to be, you know, sound with our assignment and our technique. Um, I think a lot of people will see we'll see it we'll see a group of offensive line and a team that's disciplined and physical and fun and uh i really hope i really i really think we're gonna have a special year next year we just gotta keep building one day at a time um we're gonna be young up front um we return we only return um one or two upperclassmen and but i got some really really talented we have some really really talented freshmen and sophomores 
um, and they've all bought in. So we're going to be young, but we're really strong. We're really physical, and they're really, really good learners. Um, like I said, since I got here since January, with it being a COVID year, we've gotten to work with them more than the average spring ball. So mm-hmm. I've gotten to work with these guys, you know, at least four times a week um, since January or then to January. So we're, we're it's going to be fun. We have, we return a couple of really good quarterbacks. Our defense is very good. Our defensive line is big and it makes us better every day. So I think uh, you can expect a really disciplined, physical, fast football team next year from us. And I, and I can't wait. Um, two more really quickly. Um, who's the best offensive lineman that's ever played the game, in your opinion? Uh, Jackie Slater. Um, Slater. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I mean, I, I, a lot of guys, a lot of kids that will watch this don't even know how the hell he is. Um, but I dated a girl, it was funny, a couple years ago, and her dad was Jackie Slater's guard. And it was so funny. I was like, I was like, she was like, you know, Jackie Slater's like, oh, yeah, the best offensive lineman ever. Uh-huh. I wore number 70, I, I wore number 72 in high school because of Jackie Slater. And then I got to college. It's funny. I just always loved Ray Lewis and how he played the game and his passion. So I wore yeah. 52 in college because of Ray Lewis. <laughs> but, uh, but no, Jackie Slater by far at a time where there weren't, I mean, in the seventies and eighties, there weren't too many big, big men in the NFL like there are today, but right. he was physically, he was physically dominant. He was consistent. I can't, I mean, I know he played for a million years and he was just, <laughs> you know, a te- he was a technician. So right. I think he's the best offensive lineman ever. And then probably Anthony Munoz. And Orlando yeah, Pace. I was going to say him too. Oh. <laughs> that, yeah, no, Anthony Munoz, obviously, he's a, he's a beast. And then Orlando Pace, I think those three by far. Not, no no love for John Ogden? Uh, so John Ogden's great, but <laughs> I, I, I think I think Orlando Pace, if I had to pick a top three, Orlando Pace beats him just a little bit. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, last but not least, um, what professional teams do you root for? Oh, man. Uh, everybody hates on me. I grew up being a Pats fan and I always will be, but I really, 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 since I was, I can, I can remember football. Like my first Super Bowl, I remember was Super Bowl 30 with the Cowboys Steelers. Yeah. And, uh, Ooh. I'm a die, I'm a diehard Cowboys fan. Oh. I will be till I die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Cowboys. Um, eh, man, I don't know what to say about them. I'm glad Dak got paid. And <laughs> I know. We'll I, see what happens, bro. <laughs> I, I wonder. I wonder what you guys are going to do with the with the pick this year. With bring with all the talent that's that's um um coming into coming um into this upcoming draft. Uh, I mean, you guys are ten. Yeah, I mean Jerry Jones is infatuated. There's an article that says Jerry Jones is infatuated with uh, Kyle Pitts, which Pitts, we wouldn't yeah. be. Yeah, but I don't know. They need to draft somebody on defense. If the offensive line can stay healthy, I mean, that's the Cowboys last year. You think about it, you lose three starters before week six. You you, you lose two all pros before week six. How do you replace those guys? Um, so, I mean, and the Cowboys, we were spoiled as fans for a long time. That offensive line was the best offensive line of football for about five Moselle years. Adams, Frederick. No doubt. No oh, doubt. Dude. No doubt. So, you know, we'll see what happens. If they can stay healthy up front, I mean, I'm not an expert by any means, obviously, but they can stay healthy up front and Dak's good. I mean, the skills are crazy on offense. I hope we draft somebody on defense, but, uh, you know, Jerry, Jerry Jones yeah. is never going to do what you <laughs> <laughs> No, nope, right, dude. I um, I was telling my brother the other day, he's 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 either he's either going to take pits or um, um, he'll 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 like go completely on, on a different route and like draft Jalen Waddle or something like that. Like. Right. No, uh, some people some people think that they're going to pick Quiddy Payne for Michigan at, yeah. at 10. Uh-huh. I like and his stuff. I, I mean, he is. He's just, he, his, his numbers in his career aren't crazy, but he is a physical specimen. So who mm-hmm. knows? He gave, yeah, he kind of, kind of just, a, uh, he kind of existed. And, and I understand it was a COVID year last year, but when I, when I looked at his tape, um, cause I have him, I have, I have him in my, uh, top 10, a list of edge rushers. I I kind of noticed like like Rashawn Gary, um, who came out of Michigan as well. He kind of just existed on tape, and and um, other defenders were were usually the guys that were making the plays, or he'd get like half sacks right there. Um, 
So it's going to be interesting what, what he's going to do at the next level. No doubt. I hope he does great. I mean, he's a local dude. He played at Hendrickson in Rhode Island. So, you, you know, I always want the New England guys to do well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Coach Bobby Johnson, I appreciate you for coming on the show. You can you can come back anytime you want. <laughs> awesome, Rob. I appreciate it. Most definitely. This is 413 Sports Talk, and I'm your host, Raheem Escalai. Thank you, Coach Johnson. Um, you have a great day. You too, brother.